I hereby call the Brockton City Council meeting for Monday, April 13th at 7 p.m. to order. Please join me in saluting our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and visible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, counselors. Um, so right now I'm going to do attendance via roll call so everybody at home knows who's on, um, on the phone with us this evening, which counselors. Tina Cardoso, just respond present if you're on the line, please. Present. Timothy Cruz. Counselor Cruz. Okay, we'll come back to him. Counselor Ianieri. Present. Councillor Farwell. Present. Councillor Lally. Present. Councillor Mendez. Present. Councillor Monahan. Present. Councillor Nicastro. Present. Councillor Rodriguez. <coughs> Councillor Thompson. Present. Councillor Cruz. I know Councilor Cruz was on here, so I, I don't know um, where we lost him, but he was originally on the line. So Councilor Cruz, when you get back, just chime in. Okay. I'm going to read the open meeting law disclaimer. Out of, out of respect of public health and in response to the governor's declared state of emergency, this meeting will be closed to the public and interested parties can instead access the deliberations via a live stream on youtube.com slash user slash the Brockton channels slash live. This meeting is being held in accordance with Governor Charlie Baker's signed open meeting law order dated March 12, 2020, which relieves a public body from the requirements of Section 20 of Chapter 30A that it conduct its meeting in a public place that is open and physically accessible to the public, provided that the public body makes provisions to ensure public access to the deliberations of the public body for interested members of the public through adequate alternative means. So counselors, um, we have two agendas this evening. <coughs> First, we have the agenda from our March 23rd city council meeting, which was, uh, which was postponed to this evening. So once we finish that agenda, we will go right into this evening's agenda. And um, please bear with me as this is, um, this is very new to me, but I will be um, reading both the clerk's part and doing the roll call um, as I wanted to keep everybody, uh, as few people at risk as possible. So I will be reading the majority of the agenda um, myself and then doing the roll calls. Okay. Items one through three will be acted and placed on file. Number one, acceptance of the minutes of the March 9th, 2020 City Council meeting. Number two, of the Ordinance Committee for its meeting of March 5th, 2020. And the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of March 16th, 2020. The following are appointments. Reappointment of Robert William Bishop, 333 Foundry Street, Southeast in Mass, as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. This will be referred um, to finance. Appointment of Steve Lanus of Five Rock Meadow Drive, Brockton, to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a three-year term ending April 2023. This will be referred to finance. The following we have hearings. Um, the following two items are hearings. Number eight, petition of Massachusetts Electric 
Company and Verizon New England Incorporated requesting permission to erect and maintain poles and wires to be placed thereon together with such sustain, sustaining and protecting fixtures as said companies may deem necessary to be owned and used in common by your, comp by your petitioners. In the following public way or ways, North Montello Street installing two new poles on North Montello Street, pole 46 through 50 and pole 47 through 50. In City Clerk's Office, January 30th, 2020, hearing was assigned for March 23rd, 2020. The time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? If not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. So, counselors, we will vote on this hearing at the end of the agenda. Number nine, petition of Massachusetts Electric Company and Ver Verizon New England Incorporated requesting permission to erect and maintain poles and wires to be placed thereon, together with such sustaining and protecting fixtures as said companies may deem necessary to be owned and used in common by your petitioners. In the following public way or ways, North Main Street installing two new poles, pole 105 to 50 and pole 108 to 50 on North Main Street. In City Clerk's Office, January 30th, 2020, the hearing assigned for March 23rd, 2020. Time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? If not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Council, who's, councils, we will vote on this at the end of the meeting as well. Now we'll go through communications. Items eight through 16 will be accepted and placed on file. So number 10, from the mayor, dated March 16, 2020, relative to COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, pursuant to the powers and authority provided to invested in the mayor by section 58 of the chapter 43 of the general laws, among other local authority, hereby determine that a public health emergency exists and hereby issue this proclamation that there now exists in the city of Brockton a state of emergency. Pursuant to these powers, the mayor shall from time to time issue recommendations, directives, and orders as circumstances may require. From the interim inspector of buildings requesting to transfer monies from the public property full-time salaries line item to public property overtime line item in the amount of $20,000. From the mayor recommending that the city council provide um, authorization to transfer monies from the public property full-time salaries line items to public property overtime line item in the amount of $20,000 from the mayor recommending the same. Councilors, you have to forgive me. I did notice a little um, discrepancy in my agenda. So there was actually items eight, I believe it's eight and nine, eight and nine, which are communications from the mayor. Number eight is the mayor is submitting an appointment of Brittany E. Bly by former mayor Bill Carpenter to the position of assistant city solicitor part-time for a three-year term effective retroactively to June 24th, 2019. Number nine, from the mayor submitting a reappointment of Karen Fisher to the position of assistant city solicitor full-time for a three-year term effective March 10th, 2020. Both items will be accepted and placed on file. Uh, number 13, from the CFO, in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed transfer of $20,000 from public property full-time salaries to public property overtime, a vacancy in public properties has necessitated additional overtime costs within the department. As a result, sufficient funds exist in the sub submitted budget appropriated by the council from the CFO relative to the same. Number 14, from the chief of police requesting the authorization to expend additional grant monies in the amount of 
$177 related to the Executive Office of Public Safety Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants and Research, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal Year 2020, Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program, STEP grant. Number 15, from the Mayor recommending that the City Council provide authorization to expend additional grant monies for the Fiscal Year 2020 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program, step from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Office of Grants and Research, Highway Safety Division, the amount of $29,177, from the Mayor recommending the same. Number 16, from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $29,177 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants, Research, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal Year 2020, Sustained Good evening, councillors and everyone at home watching. Unfortunately, due to extreme weather conditions, we have lost power here at City Hall and are dealing with um, technical difficulties. So at this time, I am calling a recess uh, from tonight's meeting, and we will return Wednesday, April 15th at 7 p.m. to continue with both pending agendas from March 23rd and this evening's, um, uh, this evening's agenda. We're in recess. I hereby call the City Council meeting back to order. Um, I will take a roll call attendance. Councilor Cardoso. Same present. Councilor Cruz. Present. Councilor Yanieri. Present. Councilor Farwell. Present. Councilor Lally. Present. Councilor Mendez. Present. Councilor Monahan. Councilor Nicastro. Present. Councilor Rodriguez. You're present. Councilor Thompson. Present. Thank you, Councilors. Um, we also have our attorney, Shannon Resnick, on the line with us, and our clerk is uh, following this meeting uh, from home. So we will pick up where we left off on Monday nights. Uh, City Council meeting when we had to go into recess due to technical difficulties um, and the weather conditions. So we are following City Council agenda from April 13th. The, um, that was the last meeting on Monday, but we're following the agenda of the uh, City Council that was postponed from March 23rd, 2020. We are on item number 16. So from the CFO in accordance with section five of chapter 324 of the acts of 1990, certifying the proposed acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $29,177 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants and Research, Highway Safety Division, fiscal year 20, Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program, STEP, Grant to Police Department, Fiscal Year 20, Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program, uh, STEP Grant Fund, from the CFO relative to the same. So these were communicate, that was a communication that came in to us. Uh, next, we're moving to unfinished business. Before we go there, counselors, I would just like to remind you to please mute your phones if you're, we're not doing a roll call vote so we don't have any um, interference with uh, the microphones. Thank you. So the following items, items 17 through 21, they are usually required, they require a hand vote 
to pass to a third reading, but we will be taking them by a roll call vote this evening because we are uh, via phone. We're moving to item number 17, which is ordinance. An ordinance amending chapter 23, division two, rates and charges, schedule B of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Brockton as follows. That schedule B, so-called sewer charges and fees of article three, sewer and sewage disposal, chapter 23, division two, rates and charges of revised ordinances of the city of Brockton be amended. In City Council, January 13th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Ordinance that report was favorable as amended. So the question is on the amendment. The question is on past. Madam Chair. Councilor, uh, Councilor Cruz. Uh, well, actually, that was Councilor DeCastro, okay. I believe, probably asking about the amendment. Sure. Um, which I don't have in front of me. Do you have the amendment? The amendment changed the from the original proposed rates that, uh, to a new set of rates. Uh, and I don't have those numbers in front of me, but that's what the amendment was. Okay. And I would like to say on the on this order, I know that some people would, would like to see us postpone this or table this at this point. Uh, I agree that I don't want to vote for final passage until we're able to meet as a full body and, and have a discussion on this. But this process is just keeping this, this a vote tonight is just to keep this process moving and it's very important and we'll need to explain to the public, but uh, I would ask that the uh, work of the committee be uh, recognized and that this just be sent to the third reading. Okay. Madam President. Um, sure, I think Councilor Nicastro had, I, I apologize, Councilor. Councilor Nicastro, did you want to say something? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I, I did send you a message that I wanted to speak on this. I have asked the clerk's office more than once for a copy of the amendments to this item and to item number 21. And I, as of right now, I have not received them. But I, I'm, I'm interested in offering a motion to continue this indefinitely, and I'd like to explain why. Um, yesterday, Attorney General Mars Healy called on the insurance division to lower personal auto insurance premiums since reduced driving leads to reduced premiums and, and we, we have to do something for our, our state residents. Today I listened to her on the radio saying that, she, that her office was opposing rate hikes proposed by the insurance industry because, and I quote, just not right. I listened to Mayor Sullivan's video from just a little while ago marking the 100th day in office. What a, what a 100 days he has had. And he noted in his remarks his duty to protect the residents, and I think the council shares that duty. We always have to balance the needs of City Hall and the residents. And I have to say that the DPW and its commissioner work very hard and they're very responsive to uh, Ward 4 needs that I bring to their attention. And I reflect on the water main that broke earlier this year that left much, much of the east side without water for several days and that was caused by old equipment that was long overdue for replacement. Our city infrastructure suffers from deferred maintenance and it must be addressed. But at this time, tonight, right now, I believe that the competing concerns that arise from COVID-19's impacts on our residents are superior to, to appropriating uh, this and even letting this go on. I almost feel like it's a symbol for us to continue it on to a third reading, that we're not listening to what's happening all around us. Um, this ordinance was filed on January 13th and the world looked a lot different back in January than it does today. And so I want to make a motion to continue this indefinitely. I want to come back to it and I want to do something with it. I don't quite know what those, those amendments are, but I want to listen and do something. I just don't think this is the right time. Thank you. Okay, Council Farwell. Madam President, before I second that motion to postpone indefinitely, I started speaking on this last week and I I will be the first to acknowledge publicly that the infrastructure repairs 
and replacements that are needed in this community are critical. And there is no question, as Councilor McCastro said, that our DPW commissioner and all of the men and women who work there perform exemplary work, and they've done so with very limited revenues. Going back even to 1992 when I was in the mayor's office, the world has changed, and this city has changed. Uh, there is great anxiety and this fear and this frustration and this daily stress for our residents who are out of work. They wonder how they will pay their taxes. They wonder how they'll pay their water and sewer bills now, how they'll buy food, care for their family, and meet the ongoing financial obligations that all of us face. For their children, they're worried about when will school go back to a session, and, and learning has been dramatically affected. And when will it be over? There is none of us tonight that know when the restrictions and the economic financial burdens that are placed upon our people and the loss of revenue to the state, which directly affects local aid, which could have a very significant bearing on what we do in FY 2021. We don't know how that's going to turn out. So in recognition of what's going on, and I might add, as Councilman Castro said, our responsibility is to listen to residents. They're worried, they're fearful, they're stressed. And I don't think by making it appear as though we're tone deaf and we just push forward a process of potential rate hikes is the way to go. And we need to do more for our people, but in a different area. And, and good public policy is setting priorities. We need to be ready to enforce restrictions on social distancing and to clean up areas that are Okay, Councilor, can we get just back? We need to get back to the, the ordinance. I understand we're all on the same page and I, so we're all residents, but let's uh, get back to the, uh, the ordinance and the amendment, on, please. On the motion, then, Madam then, President. Then in, then in summary, I would just close by saying I second the motion to postpone indefinitely. I think it's the right thing to do for our residents. We have plenty of time left in this legislative session to address this issue and some other issues that are coming up uh, on the agenda. Thank okay. you. Uh, Council Lally, on the motion. On the motion. Yes, on the motion. Thank you. I, uh, I just want to say that you know, I, I took note of something today. Um, I, I've uh, begun walking my dog, uh, my dog in different neighborhoods uh, just around the ward just to you know, keep up uh, with everybody, you know, check out what's going on. And uh, I took note when I was walking on Brookville Ave and Boundary Circle in that neighborhood, uh, just how horrendous the roads are up there. They're awful. I was ashamed. I really was. As, as someone who, who is the counselor, as someone who represents that area, I was, I was just, you know, it's every time that, you know, that we go to some of these roads, it's shocking how bad they are. Uh, they should have been paved 30 years ago. They, they should have been acted on 30 years ago. And and I know that you know, with with respect to uh, to Councillor Farwell, who you know who was the mayor when when a lot of this was going on, we were not in a position to act at that time. We we had our own problems then. But we can't. You know, this this is not. You know, we're, us voting on this is not voting. To, to put in these hikes, anything like that. We're prolonging, but we're, we're continuing the conversation, and I think that is very necessary. Uh, us as ward counselors, and, and the counselors at large, I'm sure, ask a lot of the DPW. Uh, you know, we have water main breaks, we have roads that need to be paved, we have, you know, everything in between, all kinds of problems. I call Commissioner Rowley, sometimes a couple of times a day uh, and they rarely ask of us anything in return okay. the dpw and its commissioner are asking us to move this to a third reading they are asking us to continue this conversation and for once in at the very least my life give them the tools and resources they need to act proactively instead of reactively. We have more water main water breaks than, than other communities of our size. We have worse roads than some communities of our size. 
And, you know, on, on behalf of my ward and my constituents who have some of the, ro the worst roads and some of the worst water pressure and pipes, I, uh, I'm, I'm saying that we, we, can't, we can't kick this down the road, certainly not indefinitely. It would be inappropriate, I feel ir irresponsible. Okay. Uh, the voters, the constituents, the people know that moving this forward is not agreeing to, you know, condemn them uh, with, with additional hikes or fees. And they understand that regardless of what is going on, the government needs to continue to operate and our roads eventually are going to need to be paid. Okay, thank you, Councillor. And um, I, I do know that uh, Commissioner Rowley did reach out and spoke with numerous councillors and this, having it go to a third reading wouldn't ne doesn't necessarily mean it's passing or just getting it to, to a third reading, moving the process. And he did give us a few options, I believe, and he did, to the councils he did, did speak with, um, this isn't something that even would be implemented right away. It could go into the fall. So I think um, I just want to refresh the council's memories. I know he said that he did speak to a few of um, uh, the majority of the councillors. So um, thank you, Councillor Lally. So not right now, uh, we're moving, uh, we're voting on. Uh, uh, point, oh, of, point of parliamentary inquiry? Yes. Through you, through you Madam President, to our uh, legal counsel. I am under the impression that a motion to postpone has to be to a date certain. Isn't that true? Um, we've done that in the past about a certain date, um, but you should have a, a date certain that you reconsider the item. Unless you want to do a motion to table. But that's a different motion. The motion on the table is to postpone indefinitely, which I don't believe is a proper motion. I believe you have to have a date certain. Councilor Nicastro, do you... Do you want to withdraw your motion, Councilor Nicastro? Okay. Councilor Nicastro, did we lose you? Or are you there? I'm sorry, I was muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I was just saying I can amend it or I can withdraw it and substitute another. Um, it's a, I think you need to, it would be easier just for you to withdraw it and put in a, or postpone it to a, to a date. Do you have a date that you want to postpone to and that's what the, with your motion? All right, I'll, I'll withdraw it and then I'll make a motion to um, continue the matter to, let's say, um, the first council meeting in October. Okay. So, okay. a motion's been made. I, I, will, I, I will second that, and if I could speak on it briefly. Um, really briefly, Councilor, because I think we need to just move on with the vote. I mean, is it different from I, what? I, I understand. I understand it's an important matter. I, I think that by postponing it to October, we will know exactly the level of state aid. We will have a fiscal year 2021 budget in place and we will be operating with much more information than we have now. Thank you. Okay, so right now we are, um, we have a motion and it was properly seconded to postpone this, um, this ordinance to the first city council meeting in October. Um, roll call vote, Shirley, Azak, no. Tina Cardoso. Yes. Tim Cruz. No, excuse me, no. Dennis Ianieri. No. Winthrop Farwell. Yes. Jack Lally. No. Rita Mendez. No. Tom Monahan, I don't believe he's on the line with us. Councilor Nicastro. Yes. Moses Rodriguez. No. Jeff Thompson. No. So that's seven nays and three yes. So the, the um, That 
fails. So now we're going back and voting on the ordinance as amended. Point of order, Madam yes. President. How can we vote on an amendment we don't even know what it is? I mean, come on, folks. Imagine how that looks to the public. We're going to vote on something we don't even have it. Councilor Farwell, I, I'm not sure why if you, if you had don't have it or if we can get that to you, but um, I was at the. I can speak for myself and some of the. I, I attended that ordinance meeting, and um, I mean, I don't. I don't know what else. I to have it in front. I have it in front of me. Okay. Um, if anyone wants me to read it, read it off. I did email it out to the clerk. Um, it should have gone out with everyone for the ordinance um, minutes from that meeting, but I have it. Okay. If anyone wants me to read the changes. Please. I never got it. Please read Please. it. M Madam, okay. Madam President. Council Madam Rodriguez. President. Yes. Uh, just a point of order. I mean, uh, I, I think we gotta respect the process in this place. There's no one more, more of a fiscal hawk on this council than I am. But the the thing is, we've got to understand from time to time that things aren't gonna aren't gonna go our way all the time. So whatever decision the majority of the council makes, we have to abide by those decisions. This vote failed seven to three, so it's time to move on to the next vote. So did you want uh, our attorney to read the um, am amendment? No, I, I, would, I, would like, I would like you to read the next agenda item so that we can move on with the agenda. Councilors, are you all? We still have to vote on this. Yes, we do. So the motion's what failed, seven um, to three. So right now we're going to vote on the amendment. So councilors, you don't want attorney Resnick to read the amendment? No? We're basically okay. just asking to move this along to okay. the third to the third reading. So I think right. the motion should be to, to basically vote on it to the third reading, and then once we come to the third reading, we can figure out what we're going to do with this. But we cannot keep going back and forth, back and forth. When this thing is never going to get done. So as I Madam just President, yes, as, as point of information, information. Committee, I will I will make sure that everybody gets a copy by in the next two days of the amendment. Okay, thank you, Councillor Cruz. So, so right now the question is on the amendment, and the question is on passage to a third reading as amended by a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso, no. Cruz, yes. Ian Airy, yes. Farwell, no. Lally, yes. Mendez. Yes. Mon uh, Nicastro. No. Rodriguez. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Okay. The ordinance passes to a third reading, seven to three. Next agenda item, number 18. Ordinance, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows, that section two Dash 127 of Chapter 2 is hereby amended by adding the following. Section 2 127 pay plan relative to the Assistant Director of Human Resources. In City Council, in City Council, February 24th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Ordinance that report was favorable. The, quest, the question is on passage to a third reading. Um, we have our clerk on the line. Yes, uh, Mr. Zioli. Uh, yes, I'd like to talk to Shirley. Would you get a chance? I'm right here, but okay. we're, we're in the uh, meeting. Uh, we're in our meeting, is okay. it? I'm, I'm well, watching the meeting. Okay. And the question is on the, uh, that amendment on 17. We just voted on it and it passed, uh, right. but passed but to I, a third I would reading. I'd like to make it known that that amendment was emailed to everybody on March 13th. Okay. Everybody should have received that. It was emailed to them on March 13th. Okay, I will. Uh, Councilors, um, we have the clerk on the line that's just stated that that amendment was emailed to all the city councilors on March 13th. Thank you, Mr. Zioli. Okay, I'll let you get back to the meeting. Thank you. All right, bye -bye. Madam President. 
Um, we are on agenda item number 18, and right now it's questions on a passage to a third reading by a roll call vote. Um, Madam President. Councillor Fowell? Yes. yes. Madam President, with respect to agenda item 18, I would move to postpone that to the first FinCom meeting in July. The reason for I the can't. motion is, excuse me? Well, I don't know who that was. I'm not sure, but okay, you, you're making a motion. I didn't, okay, I don't I know if there's a motion. second. Madam, a point of order, Madam President. Councilor Ianieri. Um, Councilor Ianieri here, and, and maybe um, um, Councilor Rodriguez could correct me, but is this not the one that we have to do because of the Lopes case? I believe so. So why no, don't we hold this I, out? Point of order, that's number 19. I have not affected 19. all oh, okay. 19. I am only on number 18. But I believe uh, they're both uh, part of Councilor Rodriguez, yes. Both 18 and 19 are part of the settlement case for the uh, for the Correct. Case. Yes, they are. So we can again. Here we go again, playing games because I understand exactly what's going on in terms of some of the responses that are taking place in the council. But the thing is, we settled a, law, a lawsuit that was actually in the in the attachment of the lawsuit. These two positions were to be created. They don't, it doesn't have to be hired right away, but these positions must be created. So we are in compliance with that lawsuit that we just settled. Correct. That's um, correct. But Councilor Madam, Fowell made Madam, a motion. I didn't hear a second, so I'm not sure if it's going point, to be seconded. Point, the point, point, point of information, Madam President, just for a minute. Okay. I sat in on I sat in on the briefing about the settlement of the Lopes case. We agreed to have a diversity manager, someone who would train people in in diversity, so as to prevent future cases like the Lopes case. We never discussed. And I would defer to my other counselors. We never discussed having a second in command of the HR department. We only discussed having that diversity training manager. We don't have an assistant DPW commissioner. We don't have assistant department heads for the most part. That is Madam my Chair, emphasis. point of order, please. Councilor Rodriguez, yes. There were discussions when this case, I know this very well because I took six months to settle this case. And the settlement of this case came along with the creation of two positions in the Human Services Department. And with all due respect to Council Fowell, we do have an assistant uh, DPW commissioner. His name is Pat Hill. When, when the commissioner is out of town, there's a second in command in that department. So we do have a, a second in command in that position. The point is, we agreed on a settlement. We settled a very ugly lawsuit that we were facing in the city, and these two positions were to be created. Now, it didn't say who do we have to hire, but it basically said that these two positions had to be created in order to prevent whatever happened in the past from happening again. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so Councillor Fowell made a motion. I didn't hear a second. <clears throat> There's no second, so the, the motion f fails. We're, right now the vote is on a question on a passage to a third reading by a roll call vote. This is on ordinance um, agenda item number 18. Azak, yes. Cardoso. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ian Erie. Yes. Fowell. No. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Ma Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Nine in the um, affirmative, the um, ordinance passes to a third reading. Number 19, ordinance, 
be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows, that Section 2-127 of Chapter 2 is hereby amended by adding the following, Section 2-127 Pay Plan Relative to Diversity and Inclusion Manager. In City Council, February 24th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Ordinance that report was favorable. The question is on passage to a third reading by a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso, yes. Cruz, yes. Ian Erie, yes. Farwell, yes. Lally, yes. Mendez, yes. Monahan. Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The ordinances, uh, the ordinance passes to a third reading. Okay. Number twenty. Ordinance, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows, that Section 2-127 of Chapter 2 is hereby amended by adding the following, Section 2-127 Pay Plan relative to the Director of Human Resources. In City Council, February 24, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was fav favorable. Councilor Thompson. Just a moment. Councilor Thompson, you have the floor. Uh, Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to refer uh, this agenda item back to the Ordinance Committee uh, for um, re-examination. I believe uh, the Ordinance Committee uh, agrees that uh, we can do a little more work on this matter, and um, I, I seek to have it referred back to the Ordinance Committee. Second. 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 A motion's been made and properly seconded to have um, this ordinance sent back to the Ordinance Committee. Um, we're going to do a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ian Erie. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Thompson. Yes. This ordinance um, 10 in the affirmative goes back to uh, the ordinance committee. Agenda item number. 21. Ordinance, be it ordained by the City of Council of the City of Brockton as follows, that Section 2-127 of Chapter 2 is hereby amended by adding the following Division 7 Department of Human Resources. In City Council, February 24th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Ordinance that report was favorable as amended. The question is on the amendment. The The questions on the amendment. We're going to do a roll call vote. Madam Actually, President. Council of Howell. I'd like to make a motion to refer this back to the Ordinance Committee for further study and amendments. Okay. A motion's been I'd be made. Happy to tell the reason. I'd be happy to mm -hmm. explain the reasons why if, if councilors are interested. Um, if you want, I, I didn't hear Madam, a second. Madam President, on the Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Rodriguez, were you saying something? I know Councillor Fowler was going to speak on this. No, I know uh, Councillor Fowler made a motion, but there was, a was there a second? I didn't hear one, so I'm not I'll, sure. I'll second it. Councillor Nicastro seconded it. But so did you want... No, I would, on the motion. On the motion. On the uh, motion. Councillor Rodriguez. Well, Madam President, this particular ordinance is to create that department that we just we just voted on on items 18, 19 to include also the director of human resources. We are basically voting on the creation of this department, not necessarily to have to, have to do anything with the uh, 
with the pay scales or anything else that we just referred back to the committee. But this year, in order, again, based on that lawsuit, in order for us to move forward with this particular thing, we must create this department that includes a second in command and a diversity uh, person as well. So that's what we're voting on in terms of recreation, uh, both from uh, a, a personnel department into a human resources department. So I don't quite understand yeah. why we're coming back and regurgitating this whole thing again if we're, all we're doing is creating this new department. Okay, Councilor Fowell. Ma Ma Madam President, according to the documentation that was sent to me, included in this particular provision of this ordinance is repeal of an entire section that mandates that we advertise city positions for 14 days, that we do it on more than our website. There was a, there was an include, Monaghan and I, Council Monaghan and I wrote that ordinance. It mandates that applications be retained for a period of time. It mandates that there be no elected official attempting to recommend people for hire. And for reasons that I have no idea, that entire section is being repealed by this very ordinance that we're now discussing. And frankly, I don't think the ordinance committee meant to do that. If they did, I would certainly like a chance to have Councilor Monaghan and I come back and explain why we think it's important. But that was that particular ordinance that's being repealed was written by us precisely because of the Lopes case to open up the process to have a fair, competitive advertising of positions, solicitations of resumes and applications. And it also included that the HR director and the department had hired the best possible, the best qualified candidate. And I do not know why that's being repealed, but that is in the documentation that I received when this, when the ordinance committee uh, documents were sent out. Okay, very good. That's why I wanted to go back. Okay, Councilor, so you made a motion, it was properly seconded, so the vote is on the motion to um, send this back to ordinance, that was your motion? That is correct. Okay, so the, ro the vote is on sending this back to ordinance, roll call vote. Azak, yes, Cardoso. Yes. Cruz. No. Ian Erie. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. No. Thompson. Yes. Eight yeas and two nays. The uh, ordinance goes back to the ordinance committee. Number 22. Two. Ordered acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $70,000 from Executive Office of Health and Human Services, fiscal year 20, safe and successful youth initiative grant to Police Department, Fiscal Year 20, Safe and Successful Youth Initiative Grant Fund, in City Council, March 9th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ian Erie. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The matter passes. The order passes. Number 23. Ordered. Acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $13,048.20 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, EOPSS, 
Massachusetts Bulletproof Vest Program Grant Award to Police Department Massachusetts Bulletproof Vest Program Grant Funds. In City Council, March 9, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption of by a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? <laughs> Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order passes favorably. Thank you. Number 24. Ordered acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $60,000 from the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development to the Mayor's Office. In City Council, March 9, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Finance that report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative, the order passes. Orders. Ordered that the mayor and or treasurer collector be authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to convey the property consisting of 3,255 square feet located and known as plot 10-1 at 78 Wyman Street, parcel ID 093-204 to Al Alex Chiaquala, 76.5. Wyman Street, Brockton, Mass, 02301, for the purchase price of $1,000. Said property to be sold under the Abutter Lot Program and to be sold with a permanent non-buildable restriction. Said property should also merge with abutting lot of the purchaser. Refer this matter will be referred to real estate. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Endicott Street, extending from Court Street northerly to Leahy Road, a distance of about 598 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Refer to finance and planning. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Royal Road extending from Endicott Street to east of Alibi Road, a distance of about 2,533 feet, more or less, and for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. <coughs> Refer to finance and planning. Ordered transfer of $20,000 from public property full-time salaries to public property overtime. Referred to finance. Ordered appropriation of $29,177 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants and Research, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal Year 20, um, Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program, STEP Grant to Police Department Fiscal Year 20 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program STEP Grant Fund. Refer to finance. The following um, counselors are the two hearings we had at the beginning of uh, Monday night's meeting, which we will be voting on um, this evening. 
so I'm going to read them. Number 30, granting of Massachusetts Electric Company and Verizon New England Incorporated, requesting permission to erect and maintain poles and wires to be placed thereon, together with such sustaining and protecting fixtures as said companies may deem necessary to be owned and used in common by your petitioners. In the following public way or ways, North Montello Street, installing two new poles, pole 46, dash 50 and poll 47 dash 50 on North Montello Street. The question is by um, a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. It's 10 in the affirmative. The petition is granted. Number 31. Granting of Massachusetts Electric Company and Verizon New England Incorporated, requesting permission to erect and maintain poles and wires to be placed thereon, together with such such sustaining and protecting fixtures as said companies may deem necessary to be owned and used in common by your petitioners. In the following public way or ways, North Main Street installing two new poles, pole 105-50 and pole 108-50 on North Main Street. The question is on granting by a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Airy. Yes. Fawa. Yes. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Nicastro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The petition is granted. Thank you, counselors. Um, that ends the agenda that was from the original March 23rd meeting that was postponed. Now we are moving forward with the um, agenda that was Monday's agenda for April 13th. Um, you will notice, counselors, please take note that we don't have minutes to accept at this time from our previous meeting. Uh, they will be updated for the next city council meeting. Our clerk, is, as mentioned, is monitoring this meeting from home and um, we will have minutes to either accept or um, adjust or whatever we need to do, but it will be on the next meeting. We don't have it for this agenda. Agenda item number one, the reports of the um, Real Estate Committee for its meeting on March 20, 2020. That is accepted and placed on file. We have a hearing. Um, we're going to work with this hearing the same way we did the last two. Uh, what I'm going to do is read the hearing and if there's no, um, no opposition, because there's nobody uh, that's coming before us, we will vote on it at the um, end of the meeting as well. So petition of Massachusetts, uh, actually, sorry. I believe we have to open the meeting, so let's see, I want to open the hearing. Petition of Massachusetts Electric Company requesting permission to erect and maintain poles and wires to be placed thereon, together with such sustaining and protective fixtures as said companies may deem necessary. In the following public way or ways, Howley Street National Grid petitions to install two new poles, pole 10 and pole 11 in order to supply electric services to a new house and number seven Holly Street. This was in city clerk's office, March 20th, 2020. The hearing assigned for March 23rd, 2020. Okay. Time having arrived, I clear, declare this hearing open. Is there anyone in favor? I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? If not, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. So we will vote on this matter at the end of the agenda. Next on, we have communications. 
Number three, from the Chief of Police Department requesting authorization to accept a donation of 32 child passenger safety seats valued at $4,934.60 to be purchased by the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security through the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security. Office of Grants and Research, Fiscal Year 2020 Child Passenger Safety, CPS, Equipment Grant Program. Number four, the mayor recommending that the city council authorization to accept and expend the total grant in the form of 32 child passenger safety seats valued at $4,934.60. There will be no money exchanges between the EOPSS and the city of Brockton Police Department from the mayor recommending the same. Number five, from the CFO in accordance with section five of chapter 324 of the acts of 1990 certifying the total grant in the form of 32 child passenger safety seats valued at $4,934.60 from executive office of public safety and security, EOPSS slash OGR slash HSD fiscal year 2020 child passenger safety CPS equipment grant to city of Brockton Police Department fiscal year 20 child passenger safety CPS equipment grant fund from the CFO relative to the same. Number six, from the chief of police department requesting authorization to expend additional grant monies related to the fiscal year 2020 first responders Nalux Naluxon grant from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Addiction Services in the amount of $9,000 distributed as needed between the police and fire department. Number seven, from the mayor recommending that the city council provide authorization to accept and expend additional funds from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, Bureau of Substance Addiction Services, fiscal year 20, first responders Naluxone grant in the amount of $9,000 from the mayor recommending the same. Number eight, from the CFO in accordance with section five of chapter 324 of acts of 1990 certifying the appropriation of additional funds in the amount of $9,000 from Massachusetts Department of Public Health, Bureau of Substance Addiction Services, fiscal year 20, first responses, responders Naluxone grant to city of Brockton, police department, fiscal year 20, first responders Naluxone grant fund from the CFO relative to the same. Number nine, from the chief of the police department requesting authorization to transfer $400,000 from police department full-time salaries to police department overtime. These funds are available due to 15 unfilled positions cost by retirements. Overtime is sometimes needed for staffing these positions for providing walking beat patrols and time consuming narcotics investigations. Number 10, from the mayor recommending that the city council provide authorization to transfer monies from police department full-time salaries to police department overtime in the amount of $400,000. From the mayor recommending the same. From the CFO in accordance with section five of chapter 324 of the acts of 1990 certifying the total proposed transfer of $400,000 from police department full-time salaries to police department overtime from the CFO relative to the same. Number 12, from the superintendent of parks requesting a transfer from the parks department separation costs to cemetery department full-time salaries in the amount of $47,400. Number 13, from the mayor recommending that the city council provide authorization to transfer monies from the parks department separation costs to cemetery department full-time salaries on the amount of $47,400. From the mayor recommending the same. Number 14, 
from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the total proposed transfer of $47,400 from Parks Department separation costs to Parks Department full-time salaries from the CFO relative to the same. Number 15, from the mayor recommending that the city council provide authorization to expend additional grant monies related to the Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Addiction Services, Massachusetts Opioid Abuse Prevention Collaborative in the amount of $25,000. This is an amendment to Brockton's original grant. Number 16, from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the appropriation of $25,000 from Massachusetts Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Addiction Services to City of Brockton Mayor's Office. From the CFO relative to the same. Number 17. From the mayor recommending that the city council provide authorization to expend additional grant monies related to the Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Addiction Services Substance Abuse Prevention Collaborative grant in the amount of $25,000. This is an amendment to Brockton's original grant. Okay. From the CFO relative to the same. Number 19, from the interim, interim inspector of buildings requesting that the city council provide, um, provide authorization to expend up to $650,000 of the grant and abandoned buildings registry account to pay for the demolition of four derelict buildings that have been deemed unsafe. From the mayor recommending the same. Number 21. From the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the approval request from Interim Superintendent of Buildings to expend up to $650,000 of the vacant and abandoned buildings registry account for fiscal year 20. However, this will deplete more than half the balance in the fund and provisions must be made to more aggressively enforce the ordinance while moder modernizing the account of both the properties in the inventory and the collection of fees. I recommend change, changes in the ordinance to adjust the fees collected and to institute an abatement procedure for these properties and correctly build from the CFO relative to the same. From the mayor recommending that the city council provide authorization to declare space available for the replacement of two automated teller machines ATMs on city-owned property. Items num three through 22 are accepted and placed on file. Councilors, now we're going into unfinished business. Number 23, ordered that the mayor or his designees hereby authorized to prepare a file with the planning board and record with the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds in ANR Division of Plot 1 Franklin Street, 109-044, Plot 3 Petronelli Way, 109-054, and Plot 5 Petronelli Way, 109-155, all city-owned land for the construction of a new road that will intersect Petronelli Way, Franklin, and Court Street. In City Council, February 24th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Real Estate. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Azak. Yes. Cardoso. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ian Airy. Yes. Bowell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Mendez. Yes. Nick Castro. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Number 24. 
ordered the City of Brockton grants to 28 Petronelli LLC an easement over city-owned land identified as MAP 109 Route 054 Plot 3 Zero Ward Street for purposes of pedestrian and ve vehicle ingress egress and access to its parking and dumpster storage to facilitate the redevelopment of both parcels. And further that, the City Council authorizes the Mayor to execute the grant of easement and agreement to take other actions necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of the same. In City Council, March 9th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Real Estate that report was um, favorable as amended. The question is on the amendment. So the questions on adoption is amended by a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Okay, let's just check that. Number 25, that the City of Brockton remove its order of July 22nd, 2002 regarding the protect the property located at and known as 7 Melrose Street, map 164, route, one, route 326, plot 7, that declared said lot as non-buildable so that possible development may take place and to execute any documents necessary to lift any restrictions in the deed to said property. In City Council, March 9th, 2020, read and referred to Standing Committee on Real Estate, that report was unfavorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Azak, no. Cardoso? No. Cruz? No. Ian Erie? No. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. Mendez? No. Nicastro? No. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? No. Eight nays, the order fails. The order is not adopted. Number 26. Ordered total grant in the form of 32 child passenger safety seats valued at $4,934.60 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security fiscal year 20 child passenger safety equipment grant to the City of Brockton Police Department fiscal year 20 child passenger safety equipment grant fund. This matter is referred to finance. Number 27, ordered appropriation of additional funds in the amount of $9,000 from Massachusetts Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Addiction Services fiscal year 20 first responders naloxone grant to City of Brockton Police Department fiscal year 20 first responders naloxone grant fund. This matter is referred to finance. Order transfer of $400,000 from police department full-time services salaries to police department overtime. Referred to finance. Ordered total proposed transfer of $47,400 from parks department separation costs to cemetery department full-time salaries. Referred to finance. Number 30, ordered appropriation of $25,000 from Massachusetts Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Addiction Services to City of Brockton Mayor's Office. Referred to finance. 
number 31, ordered that in accordance with Chapter 30B, Section 16, the City Council hereby declare space available for the placement of two automated teller machines, ATMs, on city-owned property. The spaces available for lease are in Brockton City Hall and in the John Adams parking garage. Refer to finance. Number 32, order. In order to lessen the spread of COVID-19 and minimize its impact on, on the community, it is hereby ordered that, one, effective 11.59 p.m. Sunday, March 22, 2020, all businesses and entities in the city of Brockton, both public and private, that provide personal care services that cannot be provided at a distance of at least six feet shall suspend operations. This includes, but not limited to, hair salons, barber shops, nail salons, tattoo, body art businesses, and massage services. Two, effective 11, 59 p.m. Sunday, March 22nd, 2020, all gyms, health clubs, theaters, entertainment venues, and social clubs are to be closed. This order does not apply to medical, dental, and related ancillary services, provided that all personnel adhere to proper treatment protocols, use of protective medical gear, and adhere to social distancing measures as guided by the Massachusetts Department of Public and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. This emergency order shall remain in effect until notice is given, pursuant to the judgment of the Mayor and Board of Health that the public health emergency no longer exists. Refer to finance. Madam President. Yes, Councilor. Madam President, on that, on that item. Yes. Uh, question for our, is that on our agenda because technically the mayor doesn't have the authority? If, if this has to be approved by us, I'd make a motion and we take it tonight. We're under, this, under this, we're under this order anyways. And we I'm are, sure it's already it's gone into effect, agenda. so. It, it, and if it needs to be ratified by us to have the teeth, the teeth in it, then I'd make, uh, again, I think I heard a second. I move that we act on this tonight just to give the uh, the uh, imprimatur of the city council to it. Shannon, are you there? <laughs> Attorney Resnick? Uh, I, I am here, but I'm, I'm not sure um, the manner to which this was submitted. Yeah, I'm not. I was under the impression the mayor had the, had the authority. But since it's on our agenda, I make my motion that we act on it to approve it tonight, just to keep the teeth in it. Okay, and there was a, I didn't hear a second. Was there a second? Second. Yes. Okay. A motion has been made and properly seconded to act on this this evening. Um, we'll do a roll call vote. Azak, yes. Cardoso? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Okay. Ten in the affirmative. So the matter Make a motion for re make a motion for reconsideration and the hope it does not prevail. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. Um, all those in favor of reconsideration. All those opposed. <laughs> I can't see any. Uh, I can't see any either. Aye. So. The voice vote. Aye. 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 Very good. Aye. Motion re for reconsideration <laughs> fails. So the matter passes. Thank you, Councillor. Number 33. This is our um, petition for granting of Massachusetts Electric Company requesting permission to erect and maintain poles and wires to be placed thereon together with such sustaining or protecting fixtures as said companies may deem necessary. In the following public way or ways, Howley Street National Grid petitions to install two new poles, pole 10 and pole 11, in order to supply electric service to a new house at 7 Howley Street. The 
questions granting on a roll call vote. Azak? Yes. Cardoso? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Fawa? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The petition is granted. Councilors, that concludes our agenda. I just, um, first of all, thank you, Attorney Resnick, for being on the line with us. All right, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, Council, just an update for everybody at home. Our next meeting will be a finance meeting, which will be held next Wednesday. Due to, Monday is a holiday, it's Patriots Day. And um, so we will be holding our finance meeting on Wednesday, which is April 23rd at 7 p.m. And at that time, uh, I believe we will be virtually via Zoom, so you'll be able to see, uh, follow us at home with, um, on your TV live, but we, the councils will meet via, uh, virtually via Zoom. So that is for next Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. for finance. Thank you to all the councilors for being online and for everybody at home for following with us. And um, I hope, you know, everything is go going to go a little smoothly. This is a little bit of unknown for all of us, but um, I think we got through this evening. So thank you, councilors. Thank you to our clerk who's following us at home. And, um, you know, and I just want to stress to everybody at home that councilors are available if, you know, we're available to you. If via phone if you want to contact us or email and that we ask that everybody stay stay home be safe we uh, you know to practice social distancing and if you can't stay home just to really make sure you have masks on um, really just to protect yourselves and everybody else in your homes we're all doing our part and trying to you know, stay home and be safe, and um, and you know we're, we're all in this together, and we're all trying to do the best we can for to move the keep moving everything um, forward, moving the city forward with city business. I know the councils have all expressed concerns and everything. You know what we can do, and we thank our mayor for doing what he is doing. He's, you know, we've been doing the best we can under these conditions. So thank you, Mayor Sullivan. He has kept the city council updated with numbers and things that are happening in the city. So even though we're not on, uh, we're not here, and we're not. You know, City Hall is functioning by appointment. Um, it is still, you know, available to the public. Everybody can be reached via telephone or email. So please um, let us know, you know, if there's anything we can do. Without anything else, I don't know, counselors, does anybody need to have a moment of per, um, personal uh, comments or privilege before we. Is that. Tina, is that Councilor Cardoso? Hi, Tina. Go ahead. You have the. Hi. Um, I want to thank you for a good job tonight. I know it's a lot to read all of those items, <laughs> um, so I appreciate it. And um, for folks at home, if they have questions for me, not only as a counselor, as a nurse, there's a lot of misinformation out there about the uh, COVID-19. Feel free to call me. I'll try to help as best as I can. But again, to reiterate what uh, Madam President, what you said, folks just need to stay inside, stay with their immediate families, and, um, you know, try to, we need to try to, Brockton is number two, like Councillor Rodriguez, we were talking a little while ago, um, Brockton is right behind Boston in cases, we have 36 deaths, so folks really need to take this serious, and if they have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll try to help with any questions that they have. But everybody needs to be safe, stay home, and adhere to the uh, guidelines that we set forward for the city, okay? Thank you. Thank Good you night, everyone. Be safe. Thank you, Councillor. Any other Councillors? No. With no further business. With, thank you, Councillors. Thank you. And everyone, be safe at home. And with no further business, this meeting is adjourned.